Yo, what is going on guys? It is non-reality and in today's video I am making a guide on Crypt of the Resting Thoughts. Now to start off, we are going to figure out how to actually get here. Now if you click on the node, it will take you to the wrong spot. Along with clicking on the Monster Zone info, it will also take you to the wrong spot. So there's two ways to get here. First one, look at where I'm at right here on the road and you can kind of line it up with Pinella or this little rock formation to the left of uh, Crypt of the Resting Thoughts. Also, if you right click on Danula, it will actually take you inside of the cave. Now, once we go inside of the cave, we are going to stick to the left and we are going to be coming up on the spot where we're going to park our horse right up here. Now, once we park our horse up here, we can put down our tent right around here. You kind of have to fidget with it. There we go. Got it first try. And now let's talk about the buffs we are actually going to need. Now, this spot is very high in accuracy. Um, this spot does actually say that you need a high AP. I would completely ignore that. You do need a pretty decent high DP, but your AP does not matter uh, very much. So what are we going to be running? We are going to be running a bunch of elixirs. We have the destruction elixir. We have the shock elixir, carnage, steel defense, reapers, strong life, sharp resistance, endless fury. You can uh, exchange this for the frenzy one if you don't need the tankiness. We have remarkable will, concentration, detection, assassin, death elixir, brutal perforation, strong draining, and a resurrection. Now, that's it for the elixirs, but we do have a couple other things that we need to get first. Now we have the simple cron meal as our food buff. We are taking both of the church buffs, obviously. We have the villa buff, and then we have a house accuracy buff. Personally, I use the boar, type in boar, and you go down to breath imbued stuff to boar head. It will give you 20 accuracy for three hours, and it isn't too expensive. There are other accuracy buffs. Some of them are a lot more expensive. I just like using that one. It's pretty simple and easy to use. Now, the last thing is our artifacts. I'd personally li like to run monster damage reduction on both of them with Earth Veil, or Earth Veil times four on the light stones just for the extra damage reduction. Once you learn the spot, you can swap back to a Vicious Shadows or Death Blow or whatever damage artifact you have uh, for PvE. But for your first couple hours, I'd recommend doing the damage reduction because these mobs do hit pretty hard. Now, on top of all of that, you do want to. Re I do recommend having some sort of accuracy rate and evasion uh, minus on your abilities, and you know, make sure you're spamming abilities that have evasion, shred, and accuracy on your actual kit itself, uh, because this spot does actually hurt pretty bad, and it does take a ton of accuracy to actually do any damage. Also, you can run like a Spirit Perfume or a Courage. I'd recommend running a Courage if you can. I know they are kind of expensive, but they do help a ton with the rotation and clear. For now, I'm not going to just because I'm showing off the rotation. Obviously, make sure you have your pets on and you're going to have to repair pretty often because the spot does shred your armor pretty fast. Now, how this spot works. So basically, we have these big guys that are the elites. These are the ones that drop the uh, belts and whatnot. So you're always going to want to grab them no matter what. Other than that, we do have the Dark Mages. Uh, the Dark Mages are the ones that drop the ring piece uh, for the Merchant Ring, because this is a Merchant Ring spot. And as you can see, I am getting still some misses, but not a ton of them. I'm spamming the uh, Rotation for uh, Accuracy Shred on Zerker. And obviously I'm using the add-ons as well. As you can see, the mobs do take a bit to die. I don't have Courages on, but they still do take a bit to die. So basically, as you're clearing these packs, the Dark Mages do actually do these abilities like this one. And basically, you just got to do a bunch of damage to it. And once you do enough damage, it'll say it's been interrupted and the mob will fall on the floor and then you can do down attack damage on it. Basically, for this rotation, though, we're going to be running around in a circle. Anytime you do pull an elite, you're just going to keep using it in your rotation. You aren't going to stop to kill it. You're just going to keep doing the rotation. It will follow you around the whole rotation. You're going to basically just keep going. Pack to pack. You can pull this pack actually into this pack over here. And then you're going to be coming up here. And then I like to pull this pack up here. And then back down to this middle pack. And then over here to this pack. And then start back around again. Now, some things about this spot. One, we do have the Dark Knight similar to Thornwood. They do have a higher chance at dropping uh, certain rare items, and you can just kill those uh, along with the pack. They aren't too tanky. 
Uh, they're, they're similar to a normal mob in tankiness. Uh, they do have some AoEs that do hurt, but nothing too crazy. Other than a Dark Knight spawn, we do have another boss that I'm not actually going to be able to show because I've only ever gotten two of them in about 10 hours of grinding. But you'll know when he spawns because he does have a big boss health bar and he has a lot of big AoEs that do a ton of damage. Just make sure you stay out the AoEs and try to kill him. I would recommend focusing him when he does eventually spawn just so you don't actually get killed by him while you're doing your rotation because like I said, he does actually hurt quite a bit. Now, uh, before I go into the actual uh, loot, I did forget to mention crystals. So personally, for this spot, I like running, and this still messes me up, I like running the more damage fo or more damage reduction focus build. Uh, I do run four Hooms. We have the Elkars and the Vipers for the accuracy. We do have Bitterness, and then we have a Lucas for the attack speed, uh, along with Corrupted for the crit hit damage, and then I do run two Giants for the stun stiffness uh, resist. This area does mainly stun stiffness. It doesn't do a lot of knockdown or knock back, but I think it does have a little bit of knockdown, but nothing crazy. This is definitely what I'd recommend running, and it almost is a must-have to run. If you have really high resistance, you can run like one giant and one of the other ones for knockdown if you really want to, uh, but that's up to you. Now getting into the trash loot. So for this spot, trash loot is kind of not great. You're going to get around like 10 to 11k. Maybe when you first start, you'll be like 8 or 9k. Uh, it's nothing crazy. You're mainly here for the actual rare drops. We have Ancient Spirit Dust. We have Venomous Night Fangs for the scrolls. We have Kafir Stones. We have Akrads, which you can make into Akrad Crystals. Uh, we have the Abyssal Gaze, which you can make into the Debereka Belt. This drops like one every three hours, uh, one every two and a half, kind of depending on how fast you're grinding. We have the Black Stones. Then we have the Lungs to make the Orzeka along with the Leafs. I usually get around 10 leaves per hour, 10 to 8 leaves per hour um, combined of these two. Sometimes I'll get a lot of reds and not a lot of blacks, or sometimes I'll get a lot of blacks and not a lot of reds. Then we have the Debreka Belt. This drops, you know, once every 10 to 13 hours. Nothing uh, too crazy. Like I said, they do drop from the Elites. Then we have the Max HP Artifact. So yeah, that's it for this guide. I hope it did help you with Chris, the resting thoughts. And if it did, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.